Hello, this is Paul from ExchangeServerPro.com and in this video I'm going to demonstrate how to back up and restore an Exchange Server 2010 mailbox database using Windows Server Backup. And the first thing we want to do on our server is install the Windows Server Backup feature because it's not just installed by default. So to do that we just launch an administrator PowerShell and run the following commands. This will install Windows Server Backup for us. Okay, we can close that. So the Exchange Server I'm going to back up is a Exchange Server 2010 mailbox server, and it's been installed. It's been configured with a single mailbox database. And in that database, we've got a single user mailbox at the moment. So there's just a little bit of data. So this is the database here that we want to back up. It's on server EX2, which is the server we're logged into. So we could launch Windows Server Backup. And just over here in the Actions pane, we'll just choose to back up once. the backup once wizard launches. We've got no scheduled backup options already set so we just choose different options. And I'm going to choose a custom backup uh, because I want to show you which volumes are installed on the server and how we can uh, make the correct selections for a mailbox database backup. So I'll just click on add items and you can see the selections that are available on the server for backups. Now in this case the database is stored on D drive and the transaction logs are installed on C drive. We don't need to back up anything else on this server if all we want to back up and restore is the database itself. So to get a successful database backup you need to uh, back up both the database and the transaction logs and for Windows Server Backup the way that it works you choose the entire volume that those files are on uh, not just the particular folder that the files are in. Now in the advanced settings here we just need to make sure that we're doing a VSS full backup. That way the transaction logs are, are properly truncated at the end of the backup job. Now I'm going to store the backup on a local drive uh, but if you want to you can also put it on a remote network share. I'm going to store that on this backup volume that I've configured. I'll just make sure there's enough free space. And once we're ready to go, just click the backup button. So the backup process begins and uh, it'll take a while depending on how big your database is. So that backup is now complete. You can close the wizard. And back in the Windows Server Backup console, we can also just view the details and verify that the backup type was correct and the backup was completed successfully. So next, we'll simulate a database failure on the Exchange Server by dismounting the database. And then in the file system, we'll just rename that file so that the server can't find it. So you can see if we try to mount the database again, the server tells us that the database file is missing, asks us if we want to force the creation of an empty database, but then warns that we don't want to take this action if we intend to restore an earlier backup, which is what we intend to do, so I'll click no. So before we begin the recovery process, 
I'll just open the properties of this mailbox database and in the maintenance tab I'll just enable the option that the database can be overwritten by restore apply that change back into Windows Server Backup in the Actions pane we'll just start the recovery wizard the backup we want to restore from is stored on this server in the calendar here any of the dates that have backups performed on them will be highlighted in bold and if there's more than one backup it'll appear in this drop down list so we'll just choose the latest one the recovery type is application because we're trying to recover an exchange server database and this option here about performing a roll forward we want to leave that unticked because we want the server once the database has been recovered from the backup to replay all the other transaction logs that are still on the system into that database and bring it completely up to date the alternative would be if you were trying to actually restore to an exact point in time of the backup um, you wouldn't perform a roll forward necessarily. And because the database file is missing in this case, we're going to just re recover to the original location. Okay, and this confirmation page just shows us what we're about to do. Click on recover, start that process. That recovery has been completed successfully. So we'll just have a look at what happened behind the scenes there. In the application event log, we can see the events that, uh, that took place on the server during that recovery process. So this event here, the restore is about to commence. Restore was successful. Database recovery is about to begin. Database recovery was successfully completed. Information store is trying to start the database. database has been started and we can see that in the exchange management console as well the database is now mounted so that's the end of the demonstration on how to backup and restore an exchange server 2010 mailbox database using windows server backup